Welcome to module three of our course in management accounting. This module is called process costing. Now you'll recall last chapter we introduced job order costing and job order costing is for companies trying to figure out the cost of whatever there is they're selling when they have a custom product. Every customer is a little bit different. I customize it for them. Process costing is for companies that make a one size fits all product. So when I bought this beautiful water bottle, Hopefully you can see that clearly. When I bought this water bottle, the company didn't say, oh, we're making this custom for Tony Bell. I just went to the store and I bought a water bottle. Well, that is a company that would certainly use process costing. And here's the idea behind process costing. They're not making the bottles one at a time. They're making them hundreds or even thousands of bottles at a time. So let's say in a given period, this company makes 10,000 bottles, right? They make 10,000 units in this hypothetical example. They don't, if this was job order costing, they'd look at every bottle and they'd say, how much material, how much labor, how much overhead went into that bottle? That's what job order costing requires of us because every client's a little different and the costs are gonna be a little different for every client. Process costing says, I'm not gonna do this 10,000 times for every bottle and say how much material labor and overhead went into each and every one. What I'm gonna say is, okay, over this period, I made 10,000 bottles, they're all the same. Over the period, let's just say I spent 50 grand on DM, I spent uh, 20 grand on DL, direct labor, and I applied, uh, let's say, uh, let's make the number 40,000 in overhead. So my total product cost here is $110,000. Uh, that's my product cost to make 10,000 bottles. my cost per bottle is $11 per unit, right? $11 per bottle. And that's how process costing works. And you can see how time saving it is. If I had to do the material labor over at 10,000 different times, because they're all gonna be slightly different, there will be slight differences in manufacturing depending on the day or the week. Um, it would just be a nightmare to account for. So process costing says, no, if we're making kind of all the same product or all one size fits all products, I don't need to be doing each individual item as a uh, individual cost profile. So it's actually very straightforward process costing except for one concept. So the key concept of the whole chapter is a concept called equivalent units, equivalent units. And to discuss equivalent units, I'm going to discuss these two sisters, Gabby and Bianca. And Gabby and Bianca, they're sisters. They get, they like each other, but they don't always agree on things. And they didn't agree when their father told them they had to paint the fence. Gabby said, I think we should paint with vertical strokes. Bianca said, no, I think we should go from left to right. And so uh, the girls said, okay, well, let's split the fence. You do, there's eight boards here. You do four, Gabby, you do four, Bianca, and we'll see where we're at. And at lunchtime, they had followed their strategy and Gabby had done, uh, finished two vertical boards and Bianca had sort of half finished and she had worked on four vertical boards. Their father came out and looked at them and said, Gabby, you have done a terrific job. You've completed two boards. And he looked at Bianca and said, Bianca, you haven't finished anything. You've done a terrible job. Now, obviously, you and I can see we're going to be much more fair than their father. And we would look at this and go, they kind of did the same amount of work, didn't they? Gabby had two boards that were 100% finished. Two boards at 100% completion means she did two boards. Bianca had done four boards whoa, that were at 50% completion. And if we do the math, four times 0.5, four times 50%, that is the equivalent of two boards. But we wouldn't call it two boards, we would call it two equivalent boards. 
this concept of equivalent units is going to return to us when we get into our problems. And the reason is when we return to our factory that makes these uh, water bottles, what we find is of course, if we had completed 10,000 water bottles, the math is really easy. You go, okay, it's this many dollars divided by this many bottles. The issue is at the end of any given month, we don't have just finished bottles. We got a bunch of half finished stuff. We got a bunch of caps, bottles, they haven't been put together. They're in various states of completion. And as a consequence, the accountant can't run out and say, okay, let's everybody finish everything. We'll stop work. We were not going to put any new things into the product line. Just stop and we'll finish everything. No, no, no. The accountant doesn't get to do that. The company wouldn't put up with that. So the, the accountant's got to deal with the fact, oh, I got a bunch of half finished stuff, but my math doesn't work very well on half finished stuff and so what do the accountant do they look at their half finished stuff and they go okay well the bottles these are about 60 percent done and these uh caps are about 80 percent done and they make an estimate and they go okay well that's the equivalent units of what i've made and do their calculations on what the product cost based on those equivalent units for the partially complete work in process. So that's the challenge of our chapter. I hope I've explained it well, but a better way to explain it is to do problems. So in this uh, group of videos, you're going to do lots of examples of calculating the equivalent unit and the cost per equivalent unit. I can't wait to get started. I'm so happy you're here. Thanks so much for being with me. And I hope these videos are helpful to you. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next video. It'll be an example. I promise. The next video in our series is right up here. And if you want a supercut of all of the videos in this series, that's the one down below.